Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Big day today. We're going to do a beautiful paint job on another Spalted Top Les Paul. This one's a bolt-on and it's for none other than the, uh, the one and only Daryl Braun. So Daryl is a fellow Canadian YouTuber. He's got a great channel. I'm sure most of you have heard of him, but if you haven't, I'm going to link his channel in the description below. You know, give the rescue team a call. They'll help you get out from under that rock and you can go check it out. <laughs> that was rude. Anyway, he sent me this kit. We're going to put an awesome finish on it. He's got a beautiful idea for what he wants. So we're going to obviously go with that because, well, he's, I guess, the customer in a way. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the story. So we've got an absolute massive amount of stuff to cover in this video today. We're going to do the whole finish in one video. It is going to be crazy. I'm going to try and keep it to a reasonable length, but that's going to be it for the talking. We're going to go into voiceover and you guys can see how I do this and hear how I do this and generally watch this thing come together. Let's get this guy opened up and get started. Getting this thing opened up here, you can see that beautiful spalted maple veneer just like on the other one that you will have seen me do if you follow this channel. You can also see that Daryl has signed the headstock of his guitar and in general the whole thing just looks beautiful. I fit the two pieces together, the neck and the body, and they go together real nice, very snug, so no worries about the fit there. There wouldn't really be a worry anyway because it is a bolt-on, but it's always good to have a good neck fit. So I'm coming in with some 600 grit. This thing already has a coat of sealer on it. Bear in mind, the newer ones, uh, after some discussions that I've had with Solo, will no longer have sealer on the veneer, so they will be easier to dye if that is what you want to do. But this one's got sealer all the way around, so we've got to stand it first, which I do with the 600 grit paper, and then the next step is to clean it off. I use a little bit of wax and grease remover for that. So you've just seen me do that on the back and now I'm doing it on the front. Of course this is sped up quite a bit because nobody really needs to see me sand and clean something. It's pretty straightforward. Try to avoid using your fingers. Use the palm of your hand so that you don't put ridges in or use a block when appropriate. They do make flexible blocks for these curved areas as well. I don't tend to use them very often but sometimes they are helpful. Again, 600 grit is good for this. You can also do 400 if you're going to be coming in with something like a sealer, which I am, but the sealer will stick fine to the 600 as well. It's just going to take a little longer to get it smooth with that, which I don't mind because I want to make sure I'm doing a good job here. There's some sealer on the neck as well, unfortunately. I would prefer it if it didn't have that, but that's just me because I'm putting an oil finish on this. I give that a good sand and my oil is going to stick just fine because I'm going to be using tongue oil for the neck of this one. Now. For the headstock itself, we've got a bit of an interesting situation here, one that I've gotten a lot of questions about actually, about preserving a signature. This signature I'm assuming is done in Sharpie, although I didn't bother to ask. What I'm doing is I'm sanding as close to it as I can, uh, so that there's you know, some grit there for the paint to stick to, but I'm not actually sanding the signature itself of course. Now I'm attaching the neck bolt-in jig that I made. I'm just screwing it in like you would a neck except from the opposite side so that it's just the pointy end of the screws coming out. You can check out my video on how to make your own spray stand or I think it's called make your own guitar spray stand or something like that. Uh, if you want to see why I'm doing that you'll see the spray stand shortly here. Now I've got to go in and tape everything off and this is pretty straightforward. I've done a couple tutorials on this as well. Just using some masking tape to fill in all my cavities so they don't get messed up don't get paint all over them. Uh, in particular the control cavities, this is an important feature for that. Uh, if say Daryl is coming in with some conductive paint or something like that, I'm not sure if he's using that or some other form of shielding or nothing because they're humbucking pickups. For these holes I'm just balling up some tape and putting them in there just to keep the paint from getting in there and messing, uh, messing up the size of the hole when he goes to put the studs in. I will tape up the holes for the potentiometers from the back so that paint can't get in through there and then I just need to cover the hole itself and I do that by putting tape across the top like you see me doing here and using my fingernail to push it down into the edges. Now when I go to cut around that I will just follow those edges, those inside corners with a hobby knife for both that and the three-way switch plate section here. So I've got my hobby knife 
and I just trace along the bottom of that groove and peel off the excess in both cases. And then those plates are all set. That area is covered up. You don't have to worry about any paint getting into the cavity. Just ball up a little bit of tape and put it into the output jack hole if you want to go ahead and protect that as well. But that one's pretty big so it's really not as big a deal. Make sure of course that you're taping off the net pocket so that the neck still fits in there properly. I'm taping off the truss rod access. The entire neck will be taped up. And I'm just using little balls of tape for the areas where the tuning pegs go as well. But you can use other stuff for that. Uh, Earplugs tend to work pretty well. I just didn't have any with me at the shop for some reason. I really need to replenish that stock because I use them all the time. Which is kind of why I don't have any. Makes sense, right? Anyway, once that's all done, I finished taping off the fretboard. I don't believe I bothered to film this. And the guitar is now ready for me to start shooting some finish at it. So that is the next step. Make sure you're protecting yourself when you do this, guys. The full face mask is really nice. I'm finally using gloves for a change. If you're looking for one of those masks, use the Amazon link in the description. You can pick one up there. Um, that's my kind of collection of affiliate links, and I got lots of stuff there that you can use. This spray gun is most likely also available there, although I do have some other options that I'll talk to you about. This is not one of my favorite spray guns, so I wouldn't recommend bothering with it. This is a Pro Tools 0.5 millimeter nozzle, and what I am spraying here is some Bellin's Vinyl Sealer, which is my favorite sealer. Um, this stuff dries super fast, it dries to this nice sheen that you can see here. Very easy to sand, but not, frankly, not as easy as a sanding sealer because it dries harder and faster and fills more than a sanding sealer does. So all in all, the job gets done a lot quicker with this stuff. It's compatible with pretty much everything that I use. So I'm going in here only a couple hours later to go ahead and sand this off, make sure that everything's nice and smooth for my paint, make sure that everything is nice and sealed. This is 600 grit once again because I'm going to come in here next with a water-based automotive acrylic from Auto Air. It's their, uh, well, their Autoborn Black, which is a great product as well. It goes on very easily. You just kind of dust it on there nice and light and dries literally within minutes. So I do all of my work for the black within only a few minutes and uh, it really helps speed up the process on stuff like this when I don't have to wait for flash off times and stuff. That water-based stuff, you can literally blow some air at it and dry it pretty much immediately to be able to recoat. Once I've finished sanding this all up with the 300, of course I need to clean it again so I'm going to come in with some wax and grease remover and just a paper towel. Get that all sorted. If you don't have wax and grease remover specifically, you can literally use just Windex, which isn't what I'm using here, but it's in a Windex bottle so I can see why that might be confusing. Lighter fluid or naphtha also will work. And here I come in with the black that we just talked about. This is the automotive water-based acrylic really easy stuff to use and I'm using my favorite mini gun if you guys want to check that out it's the 878 SE from Warwick there's a link in the description for that uh, which titled something along the lines of my favorite paint guns um, and the coupon code Brad capital letters Brad 10% no spaces gets you 10% off on this guy like I said my favorite mini gun that I've used except maybe a SATA jet but this thing is literally a fraction of the price. I can't afford the SATA Jet or the Iwata guns or anything like that. Uh, and this guy gets the job done beautifully. You can see that nice wide spray pattern that it's putting out there. And uh, if you don't need a wide spray pattern, you can get some pretty incredible control by turning that spray pattern down, as you can see me doing here. So you'll see how this paint job comes together. I'm not going to show you the reference photo that Daryl sent me, but. Suffice it to say, there's a very thin black vignette around the outside. Uh, and then we're going to come in after this with some amber and put a nice amber hue over the whole face of the guitar. And then after that, we're actually going to come in with something a little darker. And I'll tell you what I'm using for all this stuff in case you want to emulate it or in case you want to pick some up from one of my links. Uh, we'll come, up with, come in with something a little darker and widen out that burst pattern. This thing has nice enough control that I can even use it for the headstock but an airbrush would probably be the appropriate way to go on this if you're not as practiced. I've spent a lot of time kind of working on this, so um, it's something that I'm relatively accustomed to, but again, spraying with your minigun 
to do the outline on a headstock like that maybe not the most advisable idea so we're coming in again with another coat of the black it usually takes anywhere between two and four of this to get a nice even finish a uh, nice even look when all said and done but you can just dust it on nice and light it only takes a couple minutes you're going to notice an interesting mix of products that I'm using on this because now to do my amber work and the rest of my burst, I'm actually doing this in a nitrocellulose lacquer. This is Bellin's Stringed Instrument Lacquer. Awesome stuff. Dries a lot faster than any of the other nitrocellulose lacquers that I've used and just goes on beautifully. So I'm using another gun from that link now. This is the 904 uh, from Warwick again. This is my personal favorite lacquer gun uh, and you can see how well it works for you know getting a nice even pattern I'm spraying in front of a booth which is nice but I'm still wearing the full face mask because although this is my favorite lacquer as well it is uh, very very bad for you this is Bellin's American Brown Aniline dye I've still got my amber in the lacquer there I made extra and this is the same day, just a few minutes later, I'm mixing in some of that American Walnut Aniline dye and I'm going in and spraying around the edge to widen out this burst. I've got the black fine burst around the edge and then of course this darker burst coming in to kind of spread that into my freshly ambered face here. So the whole thing is going to have a lot more color than when it started out, a lot more color than the one of these that I did for myself. Daryl, you picked a great finish. I think I'm going to end up being jealous of how yours turns out here. So this is the 904 gun again. And you saw what kind of control I was able to get there to get that kind of finer um, burst to the first go around. And now I'm going in and widening it out. And then on my third pass here, I'm actually coming in around the edge again to darken it to create more of a fade effect. And that's going to kind of do it for the color work on this guitar. I do that, uh, that fade on both the body and the headstock using this full size gun actually with a 1.4 millimeter nozzle and this is what we're left with. I think that turned out great. We've got some beautiful color in there and uh, you know I didn't go ahead and put a clear lacquer on it because I'm going to come in with my U-Pole 2K catalyzed polyurethane to get a more durable and harder finish here but also an easier gloss. The lacquer is easier to use in some circumstances, easier to spray and everything, uh, and easier to repair, but this stuff is going to cure rather than just drying. It's going to cure within a day or two, and it's going to give us that fully hardened automotive finish that's going to keep this finish nice for as long as possible. Uh, it's also a little bit more difficult to polish than the lacquer is, but I think it's going to be worth it when all is said and done. So this is a three coat um, finish that I'm putting on, or at least I'm using three coats. Your first one goes on relatively light, as you can see, and that's going to allow the other coats to stick better. So we call this a tack coat. I'm using uh, my DeVilbis finish line gun for this one. This one, if you're looking for it, comes uh, through the Amazon link again. Uh, this is nice because it comes with three nozzles actually, so a great variety of 1.3, 1.5, and 1.7. You can spray pretty much anything with this gun. If you're taking your finishing seriously, you're going to have a separate gun for clear coat uh, like this. Not the same one that you use for lacquer, for example, or for acrylic. But if you're looking for something versatile that you can do all your finishing with and just go for it as long as you're diligent about cleaning in between, then this is probably the choice for you. Although, a lot of you guys probably don't need spray can air spray guns. You probably use cans and stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that either. So this is the finish after a couple coats of clear. Looking pretty damn good, if you ask me. A nice hard gloss on there. That's a beautiful crystal clear. There's no real ambering to it because it's automotive quality, as opposed to lacquer, which has a little bit of an amber quality to it. I think I go in after this and I put one more coat on, yep, so I just fire through the footage on this one because there's no need for you to watch me do the same thing yet again. Uh, and then I give that a couple days to dry before I come in and sand it. Now for the neck, we don't want that hard gloss on there, Daryl agrees with me on this one that that glossier neck type just makes it harder to play, your hand gets stuck, it squeaks along and it's just not as fast. 
So what I'm using for this is Bellin's Tongue Oil. I go in, I wipe on a reasonable coat of it, wait a couple minutes, wipe it back off, kind of buff it off, and repeat a couple times. And you'll see that when I'm done here, you get kind of a nice satin sheen, and it's a lot faster. A lot faster finish to move your hand against. It's more comfortable, in my opinion. Now, a lot of people do like a gloss neck, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not my preference, and when I spoke to Daryl about this, he didn't want one either. Now we're moving on to the polishing process. I have several videos on this if you don't really know how it goes, because all of this footage is going to be sped up. Uh, for the most part, at least you've seen me do this before. I'm starting off with some 1500 grit paper and a combination of hand sanding and block sanding for this. You can, of course, use a nice dual action random orbital sander if you want. There's something about hand sanding, though, it, it tends to work quite well. So that's what I'm doing. You'll notice I am not wet sanding. I don't wet sand my guitars. Uh, the reason for that is they are made of wood and if some of the water gets in underneath the finish it can cause cracking. More of a danger with a lacquer finish than it is with a 2K automotive finish like this, but still something that I'm not willing to risk nonetheless, and it doesn't give you any better of a result generally, so I dry sand instead. Now for the back I can use the block at all times because it's a flat surface, so of course I do that. If you do have the option, use a sanding block, it's going to make things easier. Those curved sanding blocks that I referenced earlier, they're helpful in some circumstances, but for the top here, the curved areas, I just use the palm of my hand and it works quite well. I started with the 1500, this is 3000 that I'm coming in with now, and I'm going to finish off with some 5000, I want to get this as nice and smooth as possible, all the way up to 5000 grit is what I prefer because it makes the polishing process itself faster and easier, but most modern high quality polishes can buff out anything up to about 1200 grit without too too much difficulty so you don't need to go up to 5000 if you don't want to that's just how I prefer to do it. I've got my polisher here uh, you can use a sander for this if you need to but it's really not quite the same this is the way to go you can also do it by hand um, but your arm's going to be pretty sore by the end of it, so I recommend you drink lots of water and uh, don't do it on too hot a day if that is your plan. As far as uh, this goes, I'm starting off with some liquid ice, which is made by Norton. It's a one-step polish that you're supposed to be able to use several times in a row with varying um, sponges, and that gets you your finish. But I'm combining it instead with some 3M. So I start out using the liquid ice kind of as my compound and then fine machine polish and then the ultra fine stuff that comes in the purple container and without me even cleaning it off you can see my reflection in there. So I'm doing the same thing on the top, same process. Again three different polishes there. You can of course use the entire 3M system if that's your preference um, or the liquid ice on its own. Or even the Meguiar's, people ask me fairly frequently if Meguiar's system is any good, and frankly it is, it's quite good. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using that. If you live near uh, Canadian Tire like I do, that's a perfectly reasonable option. The fact that you don't necessarily see it in body shops and whatnot all that often really doesn't mean anything. Their swirl remover is great, their scratch remover is good too, Scratch X or whatever it's called, compound, and the ultimate compound and ultimate polish, they all work quite well. This 3M stuff is among my favorites, so that's what I'm obviously using on this particular guitar, and just look at the result. It speaks for itself, I think. Nice shine on there, really deep looking gloss, and uh, really punches out those colors and that spalted maple veneer. So, I'm happy with how this turned out. I'm hoping Daryl is also going to be happy with how this turned out. Beautiful choice of colors as far as I'm concerned. Again, I actually am pretty jealous of how this looks. Uh, not that I don't like mine, but man, that is a beautiful guitar and I can't wait to see what he has in mind for it. So I'm going to head over to his video and check that out. Alright guys, so that is it. That's the finished product. Daryl, I hope you like it and I can't wait to see what you do with it. As I said guys, if you haven't seen Daryl's channel, go check it out. It is awesome. And if you want to see how I did one of these for myself all by hand, without any spray equipment or anything like that, check that out as well. I'll try and put a card thing to it, and I'll put a link in the description. So while you're over at Daryl's channel, don't forget to subscribe so you can see what all he does with this thing. And while you're here, I wouldn't mind if you did the same for me. 
As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.